God compares an akazo so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. In Luke chapter 1 verse 45, when Mary went to Elizabeth, she made a very profound statement. She said, blessed is he that believeth. He said, there shall be a performance. So your job is to believe. God's work is to perform. And so we thank him because we are persuaded that it's not what we do that makes the difference. It's what he does that makes the difference. Thank God for what you know to do and thank God that you are doing it. But if the Lord is not performing, everything you do will be futile. And so when we realize that he is the doer, responsibility and necessity is laid upon us to return all the glory to him. In Psalm 127 verse 1, he said, except the Lord builds a house. He said, they labor in vain that built it. In 1 Corinthians 3, 6, Paul was speaking along this line. He said, Paul planted. He said, Apollos watered. It would have been useless except that God gave the increase. So your planting and your watering is useless except God gives the increase. This is to prove to you that everything we do, as important as they are, if God's impute is not there, they will be useless. This is why we give God thanks. Our thanksgiving is an acknowledgement that God is the doer. The second reason we give him thanks is because we owe it to him. We owe it to him, not just because he's the doer, but because he is the one who brought us into existence in the first place. If we were not here, we would not even have the privilege of participating with God. This is why Psalm 150 verse 6 said, let everything that has breath, praise God. You don't, have, you don't need a reason to. That you are here, he said, praise God. So long as there is breath on your nostrils, he said, let everything that has breath. We owe him thanks for bringing us into existence. We owe him thanks. First Thessalonians 5.18 said, in all things, in all things, whether you think is good or bad, in all things, give him thanks. Nobody appreciates bad things, but it's because you are here that you even know something bad is happening. Glory to God. He will definitely deliver you should you be going through any situation. But if you were not here, you would not even have the privilege of experiencing existence. And so that we are here in the first place, we owe him thanks. And when we thank him, like we saw, saw already, he begins to do that which he, he, do, he does and able to do. Number three, we thank him because it's the most reasonable thing we have to do. When we give thanks, it shows that we are reasonable. Please follow my progression. We thank God because he's the doer. We thank God because we owe it to him for bringing us into existence. And then we thank God because he shows that we are reasonable. Every time thanksgiving becomes a struggle, it means we have become unreasonable. In Luke 17, from verse 17 to 20, Jesus healed 10 lepers. And out of 10, only one came back. I tell my people all the time, when you hear people testify, just know that's 10%. It's always one that returns out of 10. And Jesus asked the question, he said, where are the nine? Were there not 10 of you that were cleansed? Where are the nine? And to the normal thing that we do, the nine never comes back and so the one that always comes back is the reasonable one and as i show you the blessings of thanksgiving you are going to see that the one who is reasonable is the one who is usually made whole it's one thing to receive healing it's another thing to be made whole to be made whole is absolute and total restoration glory to god and so thanksgiving shows that we are reasonable in psalm 103 verse 1 and 2 he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. That means when you don't give thanks, it means you have forgotten his benefits. And it also means that you are not reasonable. Number four, why do we give thanks? It establishes us. Quoted already, Luke 17, 19. He said, go be made whole. The one who gave thanks is the one who was established if god has shown you his finger the fathers will say and you thank him for it he will show you the whole arm glory to god 
So if you want to really be established, then you must learn to give thanks. This is why this morning we are beautifully dressed, thanking God. It's not just because we are excited about the song. Listen, as you listen to the music, remember not to be just carried away by the melody. Let it be recorded in your heart that you are doing this because you are reasonable. Let it be recorded in your heart that you are doing this because you are grateful to the doer. Let it be recorded in your heart that you are doing this because you recognize that you owe your existence to him. All of these things should motivate the dancing much more than the melody. Because when you find two people dancing, one may be dancing because he's attuned to the melody. And another will be dancing because of what is happening in the heart. The one who is responding to the impulses of the heart is the one who is really thanking God. Not the one who is just dancing because he loves the sound or the music. Glory to God. So there is a justification for thanksgiving. Now, what are the blessings of thanksgiving? Because everything we do, I tell my people, is a weapon. In the spirit, even when we laugh, it's a weapon. That's why the devil is afraid of a Christian emotion. Because when you move, God moves. Our move is the move of the spirit. And so when we start doing something, it troubles the devil a lot. The devil appreciates it when a Christian is inactive. The moment a Christian begins to do anything, whether dancing, whether singing, whether praying, there is tremor in the spirit realm. Because Satan knows that everything we do has a warfare dimension. And there are lots of benefits attached to everything God commands us to do. So it's important for you to also be aware that what you are doing has an implication in the spirit. Because it's in knowing it that you become effectual in your operation. If I know the impact what I'm doing generates, I become deliberate. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So here are a few benefits of thanksgiving. So as you thank God, put your consciousness there. Make demand so that those results are commanded. Hallelujah. Number one, thanksgiving provokes increase. Supernatural increase. Jeremiah 30 verse 19. He said, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. He said, I will multiply them, they shall not be few. I will glorify them, they shall not be small. I tell my people, when you are thanking God, even your dance step should suggest your revelation. So when they are thanking God in church, sometimes you see us doing like this. We are gathering, we are in prison, we are, it's, it's multiplication. You do it with revelation. When you are thanking God, let there be a consciousness that I'm becoming greater. I'm not just dancing like one who is excited. Yes, I'm excited, but this is a spiritual technology for increasing my greatness. So if I was at a lower level today, after thanking God, I expect that I will shift higher. Because it's a force in the spirit that provokes greatness. Glory to God. Look at the way it happened in the early church. In Acts chapter 2 verse 47, the Bible said they were praising God. And the moment they were praising God, Acts 2 47, it said God gave them favor before all men. And it said God added to the church daily, such as you be saved. There's a possibility for you to increase every day. Increase is not once in a while. There can be daily increase in your life if you can incorporate thanksgiving into your operation. God added to the church daily, such as you be saved. And trust me, I'm not telling you stories. Even this morning, I've been blessed. And I've been blessed by strangers. I don't know them. I was reading my Bible and the Bible said, your sons and daughters shall come from afar. I say, wow, all of you who are close by, take cover. <laughs> that, that's why I don't fight over people. The ones who are around, in all humility, are the privileged ones that have access. There are many, many more that I may never see, but yet they are sons and daughters. He said they shall come from afar. And that's not the beauty. He says strangers shall stand to build your walls. So when I have projects, I stand. I say, where are the strangers? Begin to send resources from everywhere because it's your responsibility to build my walls. But hear me, these things can't happen unless you understand the mysteries that provoke them. He said God added to the church daily. Before night falls, I will still receive several additions. It's not because I'm a preacher. There are many people who are businessmen that this is their testimony. Every day, things happen to them. Good things. It happens because as you thank God, your increase 
suddenly loses orientation as touching the source everywhere can become your source even you will not be able to explain it imagine sometimes i wonder how the holy ghost what he wants our mind to to operate like god tells you that strangers in strangers that will bless you that means everywhere you go to there's a potential for blessing that's what god is telling us but there is a system that occasions it and that system is thanksgiving he said god added to the church so god can use strangers to add to you i prophesy to someone as you walk out of even this service this morning something supernaturally good will happen to you this is the mystery of the faith that we have been called into strangers shall stand to build your world so it's something you do deliberately look at jesus in john chapter 6 if you read from verse 1 to verse 14 he was teaching over 5,000 men not counting women and children three days later they were hungry he said what do you have the people say no we can't we can't handle that forget it even a year's wages can't suffice to give you an idea one year labor can't help in this matter and jesus said what do you have they said there's a young lad here with five loaves and two fish bring it he knew how to use thanksgiving to deliberately occasion increase and the bible said when he collected the loaves he lifted it up and said i thank you father and he said take give them five loaves two fish multiplied fed five thousand men not counting women and children and when they gathered the fragments 12 baskets were left over so this is not something that happens around jesus he knew how to activate it any area jesus requires multiplication he just gives thanks and you see that multiplication takes place this is what one of the things that prove that you are growing in the spirit is that you know how to deliberately do things things don't just happen randomly around you you can occasion them through spiritual understanding so thanksgiving is a powerful tool if there is lack in your life at thanksgiving and see the way things will supernaturally shift many people are praying and crying where they should be thanking god if you apply this you'll be amazed i've seen people rise from nothing to become something just by applying the weapon of thanksgiving number two thanksgiving engenders deliverance there's no situation you are in that thanksgiving can provoke you know the beauty of the gospel is that some of the things the fathers caught by intense prayer and prophetic direction have become principles for us to apply that's the beauty of the new testament if you study second chronicles chapter 20 you see that jehoshaphat the king of judah was besieged by three nations three kings collaborated ammon moab and mount Seir, and they wanted to utterly destroy the man and there was nothing they could do so they declared a fast a national fast and the whole nation fasted and after three days the spirit of the lord came upon one of the sons of the priest and the guy prophesied and said you don't need to fight in this battle the battle is the lord's he said but this is what you will do he said instead of putting warriors ahead of you gather singers with harps and substry let them sing in front of you and go to war the lord is good his mercies endure it forever when they heard it jehoshaphat stood up and said believe in the lord your god so shall he be established believe in his prophet so shall he prosper that was how the whole nation mobilized themselves and they carried musical instruments and they went to war when they got to war they were not just delivered from the attacks they met the spoils of war and became many times richer than they were now in the new testament you don't need to go and fast for three days to receive prophetic direction anymore because god has shown it to you as a pattern you can now apply it so every time you require deliverance if you are not led to pray wear your shirt and begin to worship god clap hands dance and see the ambushment god will cause in the camp of your enemy this is one of the most powerful ways of winning battle if you study acts of the apostles chapter 16 the bible said paul and silas were arrested and they were flogged verse 18 to 20 and they were thrown to prison in verse 25 the bible said at midnight it said they prayed and sang praises there was no record that an angel gave them whisper there was no record that the holy ghost moved them 
there was no record that they received a prophetic word they have seen it in the old testament that this principle works and so while they were in prison the bible said they began to praise god and the prisoners heard them see this is not that's why i told you it's not about the excitement you don't get excited after being flogged they were beaten and injured and they were not treated because it was after the gates opened that the man treated them so they were carrying pains and injury yet they were dancing and singing because as far as they were concerned this thing is beyond excitement this thing is a weapon in the spirit and as they were dancing and praising god the bible says an angel was deployed from heaven the moment he touched the prison the foundation opened the door opened and deliverance came on the platform of thanksgiving and some of us have been in crisis for two years and we are complaining and telling people go and dance sing and praise on that crisis and see the way situations will turn around if an angel needs to be deployed that angel will be deployed the second benefit of thanksgiving is that it occasions deliverance the third benefit of thanksgiving is that it creates an atmosphere for the miraculous everywhere thanksgiving goes up miracles happen jesus came to the tomb of lazarus four days buried john chapter 11 from verse 1 to 43 you see the story there two people advised him don't try anything here this man was buried four days ago we know you are a healer this is death and this is not just death this is a decomposed person and jesus looked at them did i not tell you if thou shouldest believe if thou wouldest believe thou shouldest see the glory of god did i not tell you that means you can see the glory of god that we because jesus showed us the precursor for activating the glory when he went to the tomb of lazarus from verse 40 what did he do he lifted up his eyes i thank you oh father that you always hear me the moment he finished that prayer 40 41 he turned lazarus comfort and the bible says he that was dead came back to life what did jesus know about thanksgiving that we don't know you know the way jesus works the precision in his operation is one of the things that marvel me the most he came to a wedding feast they say wine was out he said fill the water jar they filled it he didn't pray he said take it to the governor of the feast see the, you if you if you walk with jesus you will see the audacity in revelation there was so much audacity he knew these things can't fail take it to the governor he didn't taste it has it changed has it not changed what is the level of transformation it didn't matter and the next thing we heard was governor exclaiming this is the same level of audacity he demonstrated here the moment he thanked god if i was the one even if the holy ghost is telling me the person will wake up i will go into the tomb alone if there is fear in my heart i will call one or two people i trust follow me let's go there the person jack me all of us go <laughs> and see if something will happen he stood outside and shouted the bible says with a loud cry lazarus comfort my goodness what audacity that means he knew the power of thanksgiving so well that he knew that even death couldn't defile it if you want to see miracles in your life thank god check our fathers of faith now we every time we are in the spirit we are frowning but they are in the spirit they are dancing and they finish dancing and you see miracles everywhere there's something they know about this thing though. you know it's not just about the anointing on your life it's also about the principles you understand and how you deploy them i watched some of these men from bishop david Oedepo to dr pastor paul in nature so much celebration and dancing and then they give one command and you see the diverse miracles you are wondering what's going on so i adopted it in my crusade ministry too because when you are doing crusade sometimes you come out the air that is blowing you are freezing you will not sense any anointing you will not even your emotion will be down when you are done preaching sometimes people are, are are sleeping and you need they are waiting for miracles i get my ministry come let's dance and when you finish praising god as you begin to declare you see blind eyes open deaf ears open and you are wondering what is going on what's the connection between a deaf ear and a dance only god knows the power the beauty the benefits of thanksgiving we are too quiet sometimes that's why our miracles never come number four thanksgiving makes you whole when a man thanks god he's not only healed he's made whole he doesn't only receive intervention he's established luke 17 19 only the one who came back to thank god was made whole where are the nine 
they forgot to come back you that came back go and be made whole number five thanksgiving provokes encounters you want to carry god's presence be full of thanks psalm 100 verse 4 the bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise you enter so if you want to carry god's presence make sure you are flooded not just with prayer but with thanksgiving this is one of the easiest activator of encounters five solid benefits of thanksgiving now how do you thank god because you need to also know how to thank god number one thanksgiving does not begin with action it begins with the posture of your heart you start thanking god from a heart of gratitude if your heart posture is wrong you are just excited the first way to thank god is to sustain a heart posture of gratitude malachi chapter 2 verse 2 he said if you will not hear and if you will not lay to heart to give glory to my name said the lord of hosts i will even send a curse upon you and i will curse your blessing yea i have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart now in the new testament god is not necessarily cursing us but he's giving you an idea that he doesn't see your action he sees your heart first so he said lay it to heart to be grateful lay it to heart to honor lay it to heart to thank me people don't realize this that heart is a very heavy part of the equation in the spirit very heavy part of the equation lay it to heart if your heart is not grateful your mouth can't be grateful if you are doing it you are just being religious it's a cliche you learn from church but if your heart is grateful your mouth must follow hallelujah number two how do you thank god i'm running because of my time utterance of praise utterance utterance see learn how to eulogize god it's not only your wife you should tell sweet things some of us are masters of telling sweet things to the opposite sex so skilled if you send the text message and they read it they are full of smile even if they are waking up from sleep smile will come from somewhere immediately because of the combination of words the coinage the dexterity in poetic articulation you know how to collaborate words together to conjure smile out of an angry person but when you come before god you are doing like this even when they are singing if you are polite you now do like this you are joking enter scriptures and see the way men spoke to god you will know why they were powerful even in heaven go and see the praise of the 20 and 4 elders let me okay let's read revelations 4 let me show you one or two of them verse 10 and 11 see 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 what you now know why they are called elders he said the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that lived forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying you want to thank God you must say if you don't say your thanksgiving is not complete thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they were created glory honor power there's nothing outside those three words in life go and check everything you do these are the three things you are looking for everything go and check your life you are either looking for glory or you are looking for honor or you are looking for power for daring is pleasure and so they say all things were created for thy pleasure but for you to have pleasure it must inform glory honor and power look at the intelligence they weaved into their utterance you think they are elders by chance no they are not it takes wisdom and revelation to sit on those thrones but we don't know how to talk to god the bible said in hebrews 13 15 it said we should carry the sacrifice which is the praise of our lips by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to god continually that is the fruit of our lips in Psalm 105, verse 1 and 2, he said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Make it known. It's not just in church. Thank God we call this a thanksgiving service, but it's not in church only. When you are in the office, be bold to tell your people, My God is good. 
Some of you never talk about God in your workplace. If we come to your office now and we say woman of God, people will turn who? Woman of God. Who is woman of God? We've never heard that talk about God here. This is why most of the things we do is religion. Be bold. Be bold. Be bold. When anything good happens to you, say it's God. Let your words always acknowledge God as supreme. And you will see the way your life will be decorated with beauty and glory. Utterance of praise. Number three, how do you thank God? With a life committed to service. Service is a type of thanksgiving. Those who can't serve God are not thankful enough. Because every time you commit yourself to service, you are making a statement that you are thankful. Paul was speaking in 2 Corinthians 5.14. He said, For the love of Christ constrained us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. And he said, They that live should not live unto themselves, but for him that died for them. They that live should not live unto themselves but for him that died for them so every time you serve either god in the house of god or outside the house of god god sees it as, sees it as a way of gratitude and therefore it's a form of thanksgiving number four how do you thank god by presenting gifts to the lord gifts you give him gifts as a sign that you are grateful if you don't present gifts to god it means you don't love him it means your heart is not cheerful Second Corinthians 9 7 says, God loves a cheerful giver. So you are giving from the position of gratitude. Gratitude. That's why the Bible says, when we come before Him, we should bring an offering. It's a way of thanking Him for who He is. Because you know, like I told you from the beginning, it's not just about what He has done, it's about who He is. You acknowledging that He's your Creator, He's the reason you are in existence. So when you bring gifts, it's a sign of exaltation to His name. It brings him honor and glory. So it's a tide of thanksgiving. And God is mindful of these things. If you study Malachi chapter 1 verse 8, God said, if you take a sick goat to your governor, is it not evil? <laughs> he said, where is the honor? He said, if I am your father, where is my honor? So God expects us to present things to him. Not because he needs them, but it's a mark of honor. In Proverbs 3 verse 9, he said, honor the Lord with your substance. Honor the Lord. So when we bring these things to God, it's a, it's a type of thanksgiving. Bring gifts. Present gifts to the Lord. And then finally, give thanks with singing and dancing. Psalm 100 verse 1 to 3. You give thanks with singing. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, O ye lands. All ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. He said, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that had made us, and not we ourselves. He said, We are the people, we are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. So you thank God with singing and dancing. Psalm 69, verse 30, as I round up. Singing and dancing. Singing and dancing. I will praise the name of the Lord with a song. I will magnify Him with thanksgiving. I will magnify Him. See, when people are dancing, don't, don't, don't stand and be doing like this. As if you are chairman. You are, you, are the, you are the observer. You are the coordinator of the move of God. Don't do those things. You see young people. People are dancing in church. They are walking like this. Since you want to grow old fast, God will, facilitate, God will accelerate your time. You are, you, are, you are 35 years. You are 41. But you are acting as if you are 99 years. You will sleep and wake up and discover that your age has accelerated. Since that's how you want to operate. Come on, dance. Study the Bible. Kings danced until they became naked. I'm not saying copy the word. <laughs> because we have to be careful now. Don't go and import things from the club. See, those vibrations. See, what you don't know is that every step you make is inspired. Though. You must be careful. When you find worldly people doing all those steps they are doing those motions they are worship so they are acts of worship if you study worship every deity has a redeem that aligns with the movement of his realm that's why you go to different culture they have different way they dance before their deity it's not uh, it's not haphazard because the spirit realm respond to sound and simulations they respond to those things so when you see 
people worshipping idols and they are doing like this it's a motion as you are doing that your soul is fine tuned to their frequency it's an intelligence in the demonic realm they know it and so don't go and just copy something in the club anyone that is raining will come and we are doing it in church I heard now that people are, are doing legs or counting legs I just funny something something that you are just they are just telling you it's a new trend before you know it's on the altar and then you are wondering what, what, what kind of Christians are these what should inform your dance steps and your action should be the gratitude the weight of gratitude in your heart the weight that's what informs it and make sure it is loud 